First, Dien Bien Phu that triggered 20 years of US involvement in Vietnam. Vietnam. After World War II, France, then America, become mired in the century's longest war. The pivotal event is one of the bloodiest and most historic battles of the 20th century. Dien Bien Phu. After the ruin of World War II, the European powers seek to regain their former colonies. Indochina is the most prized French possession, comprising Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. But the war in Asia continues. Indochina is still occupied by the Japanese, and France faces another obstacle. Its ally, America, opposes colonialism. France had previously ruled Vietnam for 80 years, exploiting the rubber and rice economy and the cheap labor. Vietnam's peasants had repeatedly rebelled. In August 1945, the Japanese surrender and Ho's guerrilla forces seize power, occupying Hanoi. On September 2nd, Ho Chi Minh declares independence. The middle class and Vietnam's Catholics are apprehensive, but nationalists and communists are overjoyed. Ho becomes his country's first president. The French reoccupy Vietnam. Colonialism returns. No more American help. Ho Chi Minh first advocates cooperation with the French. Their response is to make Vietnam semi-autonomous. In 1946, Ho travels to France to negotiate, but finds no real political independence. Back in Hanoi, Ho tells his compatriots the terms are unacceptable. November 1946, the war begins. In 1952, the communist Viet Minh army takes over the strategic valley of Dien Bien Phu. The valley dominates supply routes linking Vietnam, Laos, and China. The French commander, General Henri Navarre, decides to occupy Dien Bien Phu in a daring parachute assault. November 1953, the French fight their way into Dien Bien Phu. The French Air Command has serious doubts. The valley is 170 miles from Hanoi. Supply planes can only just make the return trip. A French regional commander warns that the NBM pool may become a battalion meat grinder. Now, having taken the NBM pool, the French plan is to pursue the communists in their border sanctuaries. An immediate task is to repair the old airstrip, the only link to the outside. The French land equipment suited to an attack base. They don't envisage a fortification. The communist force, the Viet Minh, has two choices, ignore the French action or attack. Studying his tactical maps, the communist commander, General Jap, tells his officers, we will wipe out at all costs the whole enemy force at Dien Bien Phu. Jap is the master strategist throughout the Vietnam conflict. Six Viet Minh infantry divisions force march 20 miles a day. They head for a rendezvous with history across the distant mountain peaks. 
The French become aware that a communist ring is closing in the hills around them. General Navarre decides against pulling out, convinced his troops can hold. December 1953. Half the 15,000 man French force are Algerians, Vietnamese, and French legionnaires. Most of the equipment is American. The French try but fail to win the high ground. The communists hold the nearest hills to the north. Beyond the eyes of the French, an army of 20,000 peasants and tribesmen clears the way for the coming soldiers. They labor to open up jungle trails. And you can now see us on Sky Digital from midday to midnight. March 13th, sunset. The battle opens. The communist artillery dramatically reveals its presence, pounding the unsuspecting French on the valley floor below. The first waves of Viet Minh advance on strong point Beatrice, which overlooks the entire French position. The communists launch a whole infantry division against it. Under the heavy shelling, only one French fighter bomber manages to take off. With the sudden heavy artillery barrage, the French realize they are in a trap. The first day, casualties are heavy. The artillery commander, Colonel Charles Piroth, apologizes to his fellow officers, then commit suicide with a hand grenade. At outpost Beatrice, so-called suicide platoons breach the barbed wire perimeter. The French repulse three separate assaults. Of the 750 defenders, only 200 survive in the last minute retreat. March 15th. Two more Dien Bien Phu outposts are repeatedly stormed. At heavy cost, the communists occupy half of Hill Gabriel. The French-led troops fall back, then abandon the position. On March 17th, strong point Anne-Marie falls. Now three outposts are silenced, but the French estimate communists dead at 2,500. With some hills covered with dead and dying, the Viet Minh pause. In a bold move to keep the aerial supply line open, the French go on the offensive. They use tanks to attack communist anti-aircraft emplacements on the western hills flanking the main French forces. Several hundred Viet Minh resist fiercely. The French commit more tanks to the action and break through. General Jap's second phase assault on March 30th concentrates on the strong points which protect the French command center. Two important outposts are overrun. The French push hard and retake them, but lose 2,000 men in five days. The Viet Minh enlarged the attacks, capturing strong point Elien to the east. The French again counterattack. The terrible bloodshed now lowers Viet Minh morale. They have only one doctor for 50,000 men. General Jap admits to what he calls negative thoughts affecting troop performance. More frontal assaults risk destroying the communist army. Jap decides on a radical change of tactics, underground war. He uses tens of thousands of troops and civilians to dig a hundred mile network of trenches. Soon the six foot deep trenches reach like tentacles around the low hills in the valley center. When the trench lines are complete, Jap resumes the offensive. Now his troops are almost face to face with the French. France now urgently seeks U.S. intervention. America is already paying 80% of the war bill, 
providing giant Globemaster transports to airlift French reinforcements. The French request and get more American arms and fighter planes. But the U.S. wants its major allies to join the aid airlift. Britain refuses, fearing such intervention would escalate the East-West Cold War. America hesitates. As the hours of argument tick by, the Viet Minh guns decimate the MBM fool. It becomes so bad the French cannot even bury their dead. Colonel Bijard. All the able battalions had come, all the battalions. I kept telling my men, we must find a formula, we must hold on one more day. The Americans will not let us down. They may come. We felt we needed a day, an extra day. That is why we saw this thing through. Supplies are dwindling. By late April, the French control only a fraction of the valley center. Almost a third of the French force has been wiped out. The fate of the remaining 10,000 depends on getting ammunition and food, but pilots and troops are helpless as more and more supplies float into communist territory. The end is an anticlimax, resistance futile. 1730 hours, May 7th. Finally, the Valley Arena is silent. The Viet Minh victory has cost them an estimated 8,000 dead in the 55-day battle. But French Indochina is finished. Hanoi, October the 11th, 1954. The Viet Minh formally takes control of North Vietnam. Hanoi is a scene of mass ovation for Ho Chi Minh. Ho and his colleagues, in accepting partition, trust in the Geneva provision for joint national elections within two years. Ho is confident he will win. But the elections are never held, opposed by Washington and Saigon. A new war will gradually develop.